So the last thing I want to know is uh, your favorite NQC memory. Nineteen seventy. Um, that was the year, the second year of the formalized Dub Awards, and I was asked to be Miss Dove that year. And they used to do the Dub Awards the same week. They used to pack everything in there. And so what I did was I handed off the award to the person giving the award. And in fact, Becky Hess, I think, was the first first year. Uh, Jake's daughter and uh, so I was 16 and I was sitting backstage just on the sides and the, the statesmen were getting ready to go on backstage that night and this girl comes in and sits next to me and I didn't pay attention to who she was and then a man sat down on my other side, and I realized I was sitting between Elvis and Priscilla Presley. Just nobody really. I mean, this, this. Yeah. I had spoken to him several times, and I'd even been to Graceland a few times, but he just kind of came in and sat down. And he leans over like this, and he says, So, what's it like? What was it like growing up with the Chief? Yeah. First thing he always asked me was what it's that's, like. That's cool. Because he and and Priscilla leaned in and she said, "He's sitting back here in his fan persona." She said he's having a ball, and he was a huge fan of all the groups, really, and uh, he he loved gospel music, and when he went to a concert, he was the fanboy. That's cool. And he was so much fun. Nice guy, just very, very down to earth, and but he just. But Priscilla was laughing at me. She said, "If you want me to get rid of him, I'll get rid of him." I go, "He's okay. He's okay." That. But that was a great, a great one. That was a great memory, and he, you know, he was very kind when um, when Dad passed away. He called every day for a week and he was just half the time he couldn't even talk mm -hmm. he was just beside himself and um, he could not come to the funeral himself and he he apologized for that but he'd been in the hospital he um, he was having some uh, he had a, he had like colitis or I think he told me colitis is what he was in the hospital for and he had had some issues, and uh, then in later years, I heard his daughter talk about the the he had had uh, colitis issues, and she said the whole family was just kind of riddled with it. And that was her words, not mine. Yeah. But um, so he was having problems even then. Yeah. So uh, and then he died, I guess maybe seven years later, something like that. So yeah, but he was very helpful he said you know tell Liz anything I can do is there anything I can help with is there anything you know and he sent two three of his guys came down uh, were honorary pallbearers for the funeral and um, he was just very kind through the whole process but yeah but that was probably but I'm saying 1970 was probably a red letter in QC, not just not just for me. I think it was some of the best crowds in that Good time year. period. Yeah. It was just a great year. That's yeah, awesome. Great time. Uh, I, I know I said that was going to be the last one, but here's one la one more. <laughs> so many people, being and again being a bass singer, I hear all the time about J D Sumner, and uh, I'm just curious. Was there a you know we talked earlier about the competition or lack thereof between the <laughs> Statesman Blackwood Brothers? Was there any competition between JD and Chief? I, to well, me, the sing the better singer is Chief, <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that because I'm sitting here on the oh, couch it's with all you. Opinion. Uh, it's I, all I, opinion. Yeah, it's all in what you yeah. like. Sure. Um, but to me, that that was the better one. But was there any uh, was there any competition there or anything well, going gonna, on between those two? I'm going to say that uh, a whole lot of that was uh, 
stage presence and it was, you know, entertainment. Yeah. And there was a, and I say the word entertainment because there's that school of thought that says, oh, gospel music shouldn't be entertainment. It should always be worship. Well, you know, there's a certain amount of entertainment in, in worship. I'm yeah. sorry. There just is. But what people don't realize is that Daddy lived in Lakeland, Florida. J.D. Sumner lived in Lakeland, Florida. Wow. From the time the two of them met, there was always a, and I don't think competition is the right word. I think the word is probably more of a mutual respect. Respect. Yeah for the fact that they both sang bass. They both wanted to sing in groups. J.D. was doing singing with different groups than the groups dad was in. And then by the time they had both been out there and made names for themselves, it just got to be a fun thing to say, oh, well, I can sing lower than you can. Mm -hmm. um, Competition. I, if there was, it was mild and it was in fun. <laughs> yeah. I really think it was more in fun than anything yeah. else. I mean, to do what they did and travel as many days of the year as they did, you had to do things that were fun and entertaining, right. or you, you know, you'd lose it. I That's mean, right. these guys entertain themselves in crazy ways. Um, I mean. Okay, so Practical since you're going jokes. down that road, I was going to say, yeah. what's the story there? Oh, goodness. Um, and you opened the door for this one. I so did. I just... and, you know, they, I'm told I can always talk. Practical jokes. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that Hobie always had a really... Um, what do they call it? Delicate stomach. And the guys would do things to make him turn green. Oh, no. My See, I very, have a big stomach myself. My so. very favorite story, and I was there for this one, was um, we had gone to a restaurant in the middle of the afternoon. We were, you, you may know, you may experience this, you know, meals a lot of times are not at the right time. You, yeah. you eat whenever you eat, right? So, yeah. I think we, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, we were eating supper, and then there was usually a late dinner after the concert or a er very early breakfast. Yeah. That's just the way you eat when you're on the road, sorry. And so we were sitting down, Daddy and I had sat at one table, and Hovey was over here, and Doy was over here, and the Blackwood brothers came in, and James Blackwood, had come in and I saw him look at one of his guys and he elbowed him and he, he oh I know it was a cafeteria that's what it was he went and he got himself a bowl of soup and the bowl of soup he got was clam chowder this clam chowder had clams in it that big and he brought the bowl over and he sat down next to Hovey with this bowl of clam chowder and started slurping oh. clams. <laughs> Hovey turned pea green, grabbed his tray and left. I mean, like went to another part of the restaurant. And of course, James sat there and snickered because oh, he yeah. had planned it that way. And he just knew, I mean, it's the little things. Yeah. Just because it was always an inside joke, you know, and they, there were plenty of the inside jokes. Well, that stuff still goes on today oh, yes, <laughs> between the, the groups when we're out on the road, especially when you get a few groups together and you do some kind of like a multi-day, multi-city tour. Sure. You know, where every night after the concert you're doing dinner, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting to the venue at the same time, setting up, you know, you got a lot of time together. We're always doing stuff mm -hmm. like that even today. Is there any last words you want to share with the folks uh, watching this today? Oh, goodness. Um... Do you no, want to say thank you to them for Well, yes, all the great obviously, years, thank or... you for great years. I, I guess what I was really thinking about mostly was, you know, just the appreciation of keeping 
gospel music alive. You know, it's a huge part of our history, not just mine, but the nation's history. It's, it is a, it, it is something that is indigenous to the United States. And it, it is a, um, it's worth, it's worth keeping, mm -hmm. you know, it Absolutely. is worth keeping and it's, and it's worth, you know, being, um, preserved. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for, you know, loving, loving the music, you know, and, 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 and loving the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I tell people all the time when we're talking about things like this, I go into the conversation with the pre-assumption that yeah. we're all on the same page. We're all on the same page. When yes. it comes to yes. we, you know, the the meaning of what we do is Minist the gospel. It's ministry. It's ministry. Sure. That's the whole purpose behind it. Uh, the the reason behind the songs is is to glorify to glorify God glorify and God. to sure. and to um, and to tell the story mm -hmm. of of His Son and and so I always go in with the pre pre-assumption that we're all on the same page with that. Yeah, or you because, wouldn't be watching this, right? Exactly, yeah. right? So yeah. I, I feel like at times we feel like we have to we have to say, okay, well, you know, obviously I'm, we're in for ministry. You know, you like you got to pre-qualify everything. I just assume that if you're in gospel music or you're a fan of gospel music, then you understand that this is about this is about Christ, his love for us in sure. the gospel. And then we can talk about everything else underneath that because I think we're all on the same page that that sure. is the the, the reason why why it exists and why it's so great about and it. for most people now obviously there are exceptions but for most people who are in this ministry who sing gospel music who are doing it day in day out it's just like your pastor who gets up in the pulpit on Sunday morning it's got to be a calling or you're not gonna do yeah. it I mean if you're in it for the money <laughs> if you're in it for the glory and the fame, ha ha ha, yeah. you know, it, it, it's not really what it appears to be. I mean, you know, the guys may look good and smell good and, and up on the stage and sound great. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but it's still work. But it's work for a good cause and it's and it's work with a calling yeah, that's right thank you so, so much i appreciate you opening I, I mean i didn't even mention it we're sitting in the basement of your house yeah. on the couch and guys if we're going to do some more with this interview um, we're going to see some things here that you have <laughs> that you have graciously allowed us to take a look at and i'm going to take you guys on that journey with us um, so be looking for some of this fun stuff. Diana, thank you so much. You are it's been very a pleasure. welcome, and Appreciate it's been a pleasure so meeting you and talking with you. Yes, ma'am. So. Thank you guys for watching On the Couch with Fouch. Look forward to all the future interviews. You can go to onthecouchwithfouch.com, subscribe on YouTube, like on Facebook, all that. Thank yeah. you so much. Hey, we are looking at some of the original microphones for the Statesman Quartet. Yes, we are. And they've got five of them in this case. Uh, and I'm assuming that this briefcase, I guess it is, yeah, is this, the original thing that they carried around the, too. This is an original case, and they're this was the, even the original uh, phone rubber in here. <laughs> it's, it's still holding up great. It's still holding up great. Uh, we've got five microphones here, yeah. and you were telling me a little bit earlier they still work that they still work. They Tell still these work. folks that story. That is awesome. Um, I was actually in a show uh, at our church and we did a 1940s radio hour kind of a doo-wop type of thing and we were doing costumes and set and stuff like that and my husband looked at me and he said I wonder if those old mics still work and sure enough he brought he took them in to our church and they hooked them up and the sound guys are all going <laughs> they work the sounds great so I don't know I, I don't evidently there was something when they went to I'm, I know it wasn't digital back then but yeah. whatever the stage was between this and digital I know there was a there was a different stage but um, these are the wonderful multi-directional mics and mm -hmm. they could 
basically a whole quartet could stand around one of them because they are multi-directional. They are so heavy. And too. they're very heavy, and that was the other thing. <laughs> Dude, can you get a close-up of this they one? Are, mm -hmm. These are yeah, RCA microphones. About 10 pounds a piece, I think. Check that out. That is cool. They would have been singing on these night after night, night all across the country. Night, right. And uh, interesting little factoid, too. Um, let me show you. Daddy was usually the one who set up sound. A lot of times Dad and Doy would, and they would, all the groups, they would mark somehow. Some of them would take, um, like, uh, engravers yeah you know and engrave things but the big deal was losing keeping up with your all the, the many miles of these yeah. so i remember coming in from school one day and here's dad sitting in the middle of the kitchen floor with five bottles of red nail polish and he's marking wires all the cords because they are easy to lose. The statesman took one color, and the Blackwoods had another color, and you know, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And so all the groups kind of started following suit so they could keep up with theirs. Right. Because if usually the first group that came in would do the sound setup. Yeah. And they all back then had primarily about the same setup. And I say back then, maybe that would have been 50 years. Yeah. And then as different groups started using different things, they would add to, and then all of a sudden you had, everybody's stuff was out on the stage. Yeah. So when they got ready to pack it Back up. Back then, man, you just pulled out a couple of these, yeah. set them on yeah. the microphone stand, and uh, we, throw the piano player over there at the yeah. keys, and, and you, you always go had, at it. You always had two main ones, and you had two spares. Yep. Yeah. And that That's was cool. in the beginning. And I think this one actually, predates all of them. Oh, very so, cool. And, but it does work. Awesome. Hey, another piece of history here that we're getting to see today. This is awesome. <laughs>